Hello and welcome to episode three of Observing the Earth. I'm Jesse Rouse and while last time we talked about how uh, sensors physically capture information that we see in our Earth observation data, this time we're going to talk about what actually is being captured. Uh, we discussed last time how it is energy that's re uh, put out by the sun, bounces off some material, reflects, and then is captured by our sensor. Now, what we're seeing is energy that is coming from the sun. And this goes through a full wide spectrum of, of wavelengths. Now, of course, what we see whenever we use our regular digital handheld camera, which we're recording with right now, are the visible wavelengths, red through green through blue. Our Roy GBIV, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Now, violet, of course, being our shorter wavelength going out to our longer wavelength of red. Now, whenever we say long, we're talking about micrometers. We're talking about from 0.4 micrometers for our blue through to 0.65 and 0.7 for our red. Now, whenever we look at the energy that's reflected off of a material, such as vegetation, we can see that uh, in that very small area over on the left, that visible range from blue through to red, there's actually not a lot of reflectance from most of these materials. So what we're seeing is energy that's not reflected very strongly. But if we look at other bandwidths that we can't see with the naked eye, but we can see with sensors, we can see that there's a lot more reflectance and there's a lot of uh, dynamics in the amount of reflectance. Now, whenever we're talking about reflectance, we're also talking about absorption. Now, what happens is energy comes from the sun, it hits a material, some of that energy is then absorbed by that material because of its pigmentation. Energy that is absorbed stays with that material, and energy that is reflected is what we see with our eye, with our camera. And so that's what we're seeing in these reflectance charts. Now, vegetation, which is a very dynamic set of wavelengths, is one thing. But whenever we look at something like soil, which as you might imagine is much more reflective, it's more of a smooth line. But we still see a few dips in it here and there and different strengths of reflectance as we go through. Same thing with water. Whenever we look at water, we have this tiny little area. It has a very high absorption rate. So we only have a little bit of reflectance and that is mostly in our visible space. So whenever we look at water, we see something very different from what we saw with vegetation and soil. And it plays a very significant role in what we see from sensors, both visible and non-visible wavelengths, because of what's referred to as water absorption features. These are areas uh, of the spectrum where water absorbs energy very well. And so whenever we look at these uh, different lines together, we can see those little dips. Uh, of course, in the visible space over in the left-hand section, some reflectance stronger with soil and with vegetation than with water, but still there. And what we see, as you see with these lines that have just appeared, are the water absorption features. These are areas where, whenever we look at our energy that's being reflected, we can see areas that can convey a significant amount of information because of the fact of water being absorbed in that range. So most of our sensors, whether we're talking about aerial-based or satellite-based, really focus on those areas that have high reflectance values. So if we look at Landsat, we can see that uh, we're capturing three bands that are in our visible range, our red, green, and blue. We collect a band four that's just outside of our visible range, but as you can see, it's at this top of a very strong reflectance curve. And this is our uh, near-infrared. Uh, a little bit further out than near infrared, we have another uh, peak between two water absorption features. This is our band five. Band six on Landsat actually is thermal, which is way down the, the spectrum in these very long waves. So not actually seen on this particular image. And then we have our band seven, which is sitting around 2.4. Now, if we looked at aerial remote sensing, um, most of the time we're capturing just four of those bands, or just three. Of course, our true color, red, green, and blue, are the most commonly captured by um, many projects. We also have a fourth band that is ca commonly captured 
in aerial remote sensing are near infrared. And near infrared is important because it really helps us understand vegetation. Because again, you see that very strong spike in reflectance there in our uh, vegetation chart. So it's the reason why it's one of those that's very commonly captured for scientific purposes. Whenever we're talking about our rasters, our different colors per pixel, the sizes of our pixels, this is what's being captured, the different energy. Now, where this really comes in to, into play whenever we combine our uh, issues in episode two of pixel size with our wavelengths today is the fact that uh, only one wavelength is being captured per pixel. So whenever we have very large pixels, like 20, 30 meter pixels, we're only capturing whatever is the strongest reflectance in that pixel. Now, whenever we have much smaller pixels, something along the lines of half a meter or even six inches, like we see in things like Google Earth, very high uh, resolution imagery for urban areas especially, we're seeing a lot more detail. So we're only capturing six inch pixels, which means that we're capturing the strongest reflectance there but there's a lot more pixels, so we get a lot more detail in those images. As we continue to move forward, these are our two bases. Our idea of the pixel size, our idea of the energy that's being reflected. And this will determine what we see in our imagery, what is being captured, and what we can then use for analysis as we talk about in future episodes.